welcome back to part three of our series on the Pro 3. Today we're going to be getting into the arpeggiator and the sequencer, two subjects I'm really excited about. Let's first take a look at the arpeggiator. I'm going to pull up a blank patch. So with this blank patch, I'm going to just have two sawtooth waves slightly detuned. A little bit of drive. So to engage the arpeggiator, we press arpeggiator, and now it's on. Let's make it more interesting. Let's make it two octaves. Let's actually make it so the notes sustain. So I'm going to increase the release on the amp. Now I want to actually have it three octaves. Increase the tempo with the BPM. Or we could use the divide uh, knob to create uh, other subdivisions. I'm a fan of fast arps. There's quite a few different options in the arpeggiator section. For example, you can have notes repeat like this. Obviously, there are different art modes such as up, down, up, down, random, and assign, which are all very useful. Let's listen briefly to a patch I made that's pretty similar to what we just listened to, but I had some effects and I applied some modulation. This is called Ascension Arp. I'm going to press the hold button also because it's intelligent. When I play a new chord, it's going to automatically sustain that. <laughs> Here's another case, a pulsating plucky bass sound. The sequencer on the Pro 3 is unrivaled. It's the most advanced creative sequencer on hardware I've used, and I simply love it, and I find that it is a constant source of creativity, and it seems that it'll never be exhausted. It's important to note that this video is just going to scratch the surface of what the sequencer is capable of, including paraphonic sequences, the ability to control external instruments with CVs and MIDI. So let's dive in. You're going to see that it's very easy to immediately create a sequence that's very interesting, and it's very easy to program. So. Let's check it out. For this example, I'm going to make a quick pluck sound. Let's add on effect two, let's add some reverb. Some tuned feedback. The way we can record a sequence is we have 16 steps for four slots, A, B, C, and D. If you want to, you can chain them together so that you have a total of 64 steps. For right now, we're just going to stick with this sequence A. You'll see that some of the steps are already lit up here because of the default sequence that's included, but of course we want to make our own. So the way we do that is we just press record and then we play notes. And now... happy with our sequence, but say we want to add some rests in there so it's not just always playing, we can literally just go through here and click any of the steps that we want and it'll just turn it off. For example, like I'm just going to go here through randomly. 
Let's try that. Sounds cool already. Let's add even more interest by adding some ratchets. Pull up track select and let's go to ratchet. So now you'll see over here, we can add ratchets. So maybe I'll add one at the very end of the phrase and maybe a few places in here. So now it'll sound like this. If I wanna transpose it, I just play another key on the synth. So already by making a quick pluck patch and using the sequencer, we've already got the start of a song or a sequence for a song or whatever. Um, and as you can see, we can also start manipulating on the fly. Speaking of tweaking parameters on the fly, you can also record those tweaks. So for example, if I press play now, and then I press record and start twisting knobs, it's going to record that information. listen to was a 16 step phrase, but you can chain A, B, C, and D together for a 64 step sequence and record all this stuff in real time. You can essentially come up with an incredibly elaborate sequence, large form composition practically, with using just the sequencer and all the parameters on here. Before we continue, I also want to show you how you can add rests while you're recording or ties. If I wanted to create a new phrase, play a couple notes. But then say I wanted to jump to another point in the sequence, just start here, continue, and go there. Now if I play it back, adding ties is just as easy. I'm going to increase the sustain and release on this patch so that we can have some sustain because right now it's a pluck. So I'm gonna press record once again. And now I'm gonna press and hold that step. And now we're continuing here. Do it again. So. Let's get into a performance example of some patches I've made utilizing the sequencer and also utilizing the different slots in a performance context. Thank you. 
talk about a cool way to use a sequencer with a percussive sequence. With the wavetables included in Oscillator 3, there are some percussive sounds that have been sampled or turned into waves. I'm going to show you one that is the 808 style. And there's bits and pieces of the wavetable that are literally the sounds of claps or hi-hats or kick drums. By using an auxiliary envelope to play back just a small snippet of the wavetable, you can then use the gated sequencer to scan that wavetable to find bits and elements of the things that you want it to play back, like kicks, snares, hi-hats, claps, whatever. And then you can actually make something that sounds like this. So that synthesized drum sequence is using those, is using that wavetable, and also that first note almost sounds like a bass, so you can then play with it. And then when you hold, you get the sequence. It's amazing how easy it is to use the sequencer and yet how complex you can get with it. And that kind of ties it back in with the rest of the synth. You can do all the classic fat sounds that you'd expect from any of those wonderful vintage mono synths. And you can get crazy with all the modern stuff. So for me, this is kind of, if this was the only mono synth I could ever have, I'd be happy. All right, thanks for watching. Thank you.